and now we move on to Mark Hewitt, the CEO of ISACS, a company focused on driving innovation and application of heat pump technologies in the UK. Mark trained as an architect at Cambridge University and has been involved in research and development projects in building physics and delivering applied innovation for 33 years. Today, Mark will be talking us through the arguments for going local and why we'd be going local if we don't start to approach domestic heat at a local level. Over to you, Mark. Paper, thanks very much indeed. Um, and just to uh, focus on the, the content of my piece of the pie this afternoon, um, I'm going to give a presentation making the case for balanced energy networks microgrids and heat pumps. So that's tried and tested decentralized technologies to show how they are demonstrably fit for purpose and planet. And um, this lovely title uh, for, for my presentation, I owe to Pippa. So Pippa, thank you for that. And I, I hope it can be, um, can, be, uh, can, can be illuminating for you all. So just a quick, uh, a, a quick uh, description of what, what we do at ISACS. We are unashamedly on the heat pump side of this conversation. We are designers, makers, installers, innovators, and operators of heat pump systems. Um, and our absolute uh, mission in life is to find the right engineering solutions to tackle climate change and to ensure that our customers get the best possible outcome from the systems that we design for them. Um, so why do we think that heat pumps are the right solution for now? Um, well, I guess, you know, the most obvious point is that they are available right now. You can go out and you can buy one. Um, and the industry that supports the supply chains that support that um, has the root stock to be able to grow and scale to meet the demand that we are already incredibly behind meeting, as we've learned today, um, rapidly. So, so, so industry has the ability to meet that need. So that process is going to continue to drive down the costs and improve the customer proposition. That's really important in relation to some of the points Graham was making just there. Um, and in the context of the UK, the UK sort of slightly by accident perhaps, has achieved a near miraculous grid decarbonisation, making electrified heat the absolute best at scale available choice right now for decarbonising heat. Um, and in the context of electrified heat decarbonisation, heat pumps are around four times more efficient than electrical resistance heaters, which has an enormous impact on reducing peak demand on the grid. Um, points which were picked up earlier on. So uh, my proposal, my, you know, my proposition is that heat pumps can slip into the warm bed that gas boilers we are hoping are going to uh, leave very shortly. Um, and how do we know that they can do that? We'll, we'll, we'll pick that question of how we know uh, a, little bit, a little bit later on. The challenges are obviously the business case, how to make this affordable for the customer and the grid capacity, but I'm going to leave those two questions for other people to, to address. Um, here is a big scale example of heat pumps working in the real world. Here is this project that we delivered at London South Bank University and with London South Bank University for a heat network driven by high temperature heat pumps. And the point about that is twofold. Um, that the high temperature heat pumps are able to deliver a solution right now. So these big chunky heat pumps can go into big chunky buildings right now and muscle out gas because they can provide temperatures equivalent to the existing requirements of those buildings. In infrastructure terms, this is relatively light touch um, and that is because we are using uh, an ambient temperature heat network, which means that we are circulating water at ambient temperatures. And that means that we don't have very expensive infrastructure costs around the pipe work. Disruption, really important point for real customers in real places. This 
uh, this installation was made without disturbing the building's interiors or the operations inside the buildings at all. So retrofit high temperature heat pumps right now are an incredibly good solution for rapid heat decarbonization. Um, but there are other interesting and exciting benefits for ambient heat networks like this. Um, and they are that, if, if you look at this little diagrammatic, red buildings are buildings that are wanting to heat, blue buildings are buildings that are wanting to cool, purple buildings are buildings that are wanting to heat and cool, and the single pipe circuit can deliver heating and or cooling or both to all of those network clients. Um, and because the infrastructure costs are relatively slight, then if you're the building that is neither the little white building there that doesn't want to take part, that's fine because we don't have to get gigantic buy-ins from uh, and cornerstone customers and all those issues which prevent rapid uptake of heat networks. And when you've got your little heat network working that suits your development, then if the one next door comes along, then you can do the next one and you can join them together. So uh, it, it's a very applicable practical solution for providing heat network solutions in the UK right now and suits the UK business models. What's it for? Well, it's obviously for, for mitigating carbon. And so if you look at that project, uh, heat pump running CFP of 2.9 compared with gas boiler efficiency of 85% for about uh, 2 million kilowatt hours heating a year. Um, we have no NOx emissions on site, no particulate emissions, and over the next 20 year period, about just over 9,000 tons of CO2 saved. So the orange bar is what the gas boilers do, and the blue bar is what the high temperature heat pumps do. Um, picking up a question that was addressed a bit earlier on around why do we think that heat pumps can um, occupy the warm bed left by gas boilers? Well, there's a little experiment we ran on one of our projects over this Christmas period, um, really just to illustrate this, the, the, this uh, in a way, one of, one of the challenges which is often thrown at heat pumps is that they are unable economically to replace gas boilers because they are unable to address temperature needs within a building uh, using the existing emitter infrastructure, that's radiators, uh, fan coil heaters, etc. So here, here is a community uh, project, this is a community heat network in Bristol, and it's a self-built building in the 1980s, it's got a pretty inefficient envelope. Um, and so we have provided this community building with the heat network, which serves the heat adjacent building and potentially uh, some housing uh, nearby. And the, that building has been retrofitted with no updates to its existing emitter capacity, um, because that was looked at and we decided that we would not uh, we, we, we would not impose that cost. Um, and so, you know, this is kind of, this is, you know, part of the UK's generally mixed and on the whole fairly ropey uh, existing building fabric. Um, and here we go. If you look at those two graphs, here's a couple of spaces. We're switching off the heating. Um, it, it actually got pretty chilly, you, you may recall, over the Christmas period. So we did a little bit of uh, frost protection. But then from the 11th of January, we switched the heating back on. And within a very short period of time, as you can see there, we bring that building up to cozy, comfortable temperatures. Um, and so, uh, the, you know, there is absolutely no doubt about the technical ability of heat pumps to deliver, uh, to replace gas boilers really um, pretty well as they stand. Um, the other amazing thing about deploying heat pumps in 
this next project of decarbonizing heat in the UK is that they are fantastically sociable in terms of their ability to work with other technologies uh, in a sophisticated way. So here is here is a, a project example where we are uh, we have two levels of heat pump input into a, a microgrid where the heat pump is providing uh, a kind of the, the, the green box is providing a, a sort of low level heat uptake um, to, to to give an ambient temperature loop going around the project and then in each individual dwelling there's a second heat pump which then upgrades the temperature to uh, to the demand of the individual household and now that's great but there are a whole bunch of other things that this can do so um, the microgrid localizes the resource so it shortens the supply chain for energy that's fantastically important it puts the ownership of energy into the hands of the community potentially it depends obviously on the ownership model but in any case, it brings it brings the infrastructure, the energy infrastructure, much more, uh, much more, much closer to to the consumer. So the re the reduction on the national grid reinforcement investment requirement is obviously very significant because microgrids keep you local and reduce your obviously your peak load requirements on the grid and as we've heard by the one something that's going that's a big question about threading our route forward mitigating carbon emissions from peak time heating requirement well that can be done using batteries in a microgrid situation with heat pumps in but the heat pumps themselves are also very good at um, helping to offset peaks by exploiting thermal massive buildings, by allowing DHW storage. Um, and importantly, the demand side management for optimizing the cost envelope for the microgrid and the customer is something that heat pumps are really good at contributing to. So it's, it, it is absolutely a great idea to manage fleets of heat pumps in a demand side management context. And that is a great potential revenue stream. So um, there's something else which uh, I think people are perhaps not paying enough attention to, which is that heat pumps can provide cooling. And I think that in the very near future, we're going to be extremely grateful for that uh, in the residential housing sector in the UK. Um, more broadly, microgrids, what I like about microgrids is, is this kind of sense, there's a slight hint of utopia. They, they're a kind of, they provide, I think, a quite a positive future vision for the way the communities can be, uh, can be designed and created in the UK, and I like that. Um, challenges, yes, of course there are. Business, the business case, how to make microgrids affordable for the customer, the producer, lots of work going on about local energy markets now. So I think we're going to see some, you know, solutions coming around here quickly. Um, and the infrastructure life cycle costs very importantly need to be thought about. How, how you look after them and make them affordable uh, in the long run, that's another challenge. So just finally, um, I just wanted to say something about hydrogen, uh, which is that I mean, I, I'm sure you know this from your GCSE chemistry, um, but if you combine hydrogen with pure oxygen, you get water like that, um, which is, you know, fabulous. But if, um, if you burn hydrogen in air, you get something much more problematic. You get, um, basically the recombination of nitrogen with oxygen molecules and you get NOx, you get lots of NOx. You get perhaps up to six times as much NOx pollution as you do if you're just burning methane. And I think that's a really serious problem. 22% um, of the methane, uh, sorry, of NOx emissions in 
the greater London area come from gas boilers. So if you multiply that, that by six, then we have a disaster. So NOx emissions have a direct and indirect effects on human health. They cause breathing problems and chronically reduce lung function. So uh, the impacts particularly severe on children. So I, th I think that's a, a really big issue which has been under considered uh, in this conversation around the future solutions for heat. So positively, uh, just to conclude, heat pumps, heat networks and microgrids, in my view, are really real tools that we have at our disposal right now for decarbonizing heat. Um, I think hydrogen has a very, very interesting role potentially to play in future transport planning. So, for example, fuel cell electric vehicles produce absolutely no NOx emissions um, and fit, I think, much more logically into an infrastructure pattern because taking hydrogen to, uh, to what are now petrol stations is, is a kind of replication of the existing infrastructure model and it makes sense to everybody. Um, so I would say just in conclusion that, yeah, that, that we, should, we should go locomotion for hydrogen, but um, we should as fast as we can deploy heat pumps, heat networks and microgrids to uh, impact on our immediate decarbonisation needs for heat. Thank you very much.